Greetings, everyone, and thank you for joining me. We have a wonderful podcast today. I'm going to go back about three years. Let's go back to 2016 when what was going on with Robert Sylvester Kelly and how this docuseries came to be. We're going to put you in a place where you're able to make a decision for yourself regarding how these docuseries testimonies were able to be used in trial to convict um, charges upon Mr. Robert Sylvester Kelly. So let's get into it. The first thing we're going to do is listen to an interview. Okay, it's going to be short and then we're going to look at some comments. Here we go. Right now, I'm thrilled to have her here, Asante McGee out of Atlanta, Georgia. Asante, how are you today? I'm doing well. How are you? I am well. So listen, for those that didn't get a chance to watch Surviving R. Kelly, bring our viewers up to speed on when you met R. Kelly, how you came about, and then when did you actually realize that something was wrong and you needed to get out of that situation? Um, I originally met R. Kelly um, Entourage back in 2013 during the Black Panthers promo tour, and I officially met R. Kelly himself in January 2014. And from that moment, he gave me his number. Um, we, you know, we conversed, we FaceTimed each other back and forth until his Bad Wood show back in February 2014 in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and that's when we actually had. Um, our first sexual uh, encounter and from that moment on we just continued to see each other he would fly me to different cities wherever he toured and even whenever he was in Atlanta I would visit him at one of the homes that he was staying in in Atlanta um, so going back two and a half years I never saw anything controlling you know he was pretty much you know not he didn't want me to tell people my whereabouts uh he just always wanted me to be cautious letting people know that i was with him for my protection it wasn't until until, until the summer of 2016 for the buffet tour mm-hmm. is when he actually moved me into his house it wasn't a conversation that we had he just pretty much i was on the sprinter and we arrived at his atlanta home mm-hmm. with me and two of the other girls from that moment that's when the controlling began. Um, from the moment I arrived at the house, he gave us the tour, showed me what, where my bedroom was, and every day there was a different room that he was bringing to me. One of the things that really disturbed me was watching one of the young ladies that's at the house right now um, perform oral sex on him in front of me and other people. Wow. And I knew she was young, and somehow she ended up telling me she was 18 years old. And I knew that was too close to uh, my daughter's age, mm-hmm. my oldest child. And I knew then that, oh, no, this is not what I expected. I don't, you know, agree with the things that's going on, the treatment he's giving me and the other girl. So the second week of me being in his house, I started plotting my getaway. Um, I ended up being in the house a total of three weeks. And when I left, I had to get my mind together and see if this was really what was going on. So I, you know, reached out to someone else to let them know what I witnessed to see if this was something new or if this is, you know, if I'm not just over-exaggerating. So with the few, you know, help of others, I was able to reach out to both of the family members and let them know, you know, hey, your daughter is in this house and this is what's going on. This is what I witnessed and this is the treatment he's given me and the other girls. And so that's pretty much how the movement started, you know, just letting them know everything that was going on. Um, And this is, after that, this is pretty much where we are today, doing interviews with BuzzFeed, Article, and the Lifetime documentary. I guess, one, I didn't believe the allegations because he was acquitted of the charges. I've never seen the sex tape, and I have no desire to see the sex tape. And just being around him, going to, you know, to different concerts and being backstage, I never saw an underage girl there. And, I mean, it was one time the year prior back in Connecticut, I did see a young girl that, to me, I thought she looked young, but, you know, I'm thinking, okay, maybe she's older than what she looked, but I've never seen her again until I saw her in that house. So that's when I'm starting to think, okay, and even certain things he wanted me to do, you know, change my voice to sound like a young, you know, a little girl. Mm. And so, you know, it was just a lot of things that I was noticing as I moved into the house more than when I was just traveling back and forth. The Black Room is basically a sex dungeon. In that sex dungeon, you don't know what's going to happen in that sex dungeon. And you just had to 
to be okay with it. Whether you show that you didn't want to participate, you're going to do the unthinkable to him and to whoever's in that room. So when you're summoned to that room, you don't know who's in there and what to expect. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I say to this day, it's things that I was forced to do. And when I say forced, it's not like he held a gun to my head. No, he didn't. Right. But whenever I would disagree to, you know, want to participate in it, he'd be like, well, you see the other girls don't have a problem doing it. If you really love daddy the way you love daddy, then I don't see a problem. So at this point, I'm feeling like, okay, I have to show and prove to him that I'm loyal to him. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to do whatever it takes. But deep down, I didn't, you know, I was not happy with it. The other girls that was there, and I just want to make this clear. The other girls that was in the room, everyone was of age. I've never been with the 18-year-old at, at all. Mm -hmm. it, I, I was mainly with the trainer or someone else that he would bring to the house. But I just want to put that on the record that I was never with an underage girl. Yes. He's never physically hit me. The close to physical that he's done to me was when I had on the wrong type of shirt. When I came downstairs for us to leave, mm -hmm. then he, you know, he ended up grabbing my arm and pulling me to the side, telling me, you need to go change your shirt. And I went upstairs, changed my shirt, and then I ended up being separated from the other girls. That day, we were actually supposed to go to the mall while he went to the studio and played basketball. But because I wore the wrong shirt, I was secluded, you know, I was isolated from the other girls that particular day. And he pretty much started telling me the rules of what I needed to wear. And, you know, I told him, well, it's hot outside. I shouldn't have to wear, you know, a jogging suit. And he didn't want to hear that. It was basically his way or no way. Well, for my book, I just want people to know that my life is not just about R. Kelly being abused by him. Mm -hmm. I was born into abuse. I mean, right. my mom, she... Uh, physically abused me and even after being physically abused by my mom going through sec uh, going through foster care almost being sexually assaulted there to being in a marital abuse so I okay now we're gonna listen to the ex-husband of Asante McGee during this time um three years ago this so this is old um if you haven't um, heard about what was going on during this time. I'm going to enlighten you. This is all part of the appeal process because this is what led to the conviction of Robert Sylvester Kelly. So now let's listen to Asante's ex-husband um, about the other side. And then we're going to look at, listen to the daughter's perspective. Okay, let's go. Okay. Well, from the beginning, if you want to know, you know what I'm saying, I actually met her around, uh, it was like a Mardi Gras time, you know what I'm saying, New Orleans, okay? She was walking with her friend, and uh, I seen her friend, you know what I'm saying? That was the first person I seen, you dig? And I walked up to her, you know what I'm saying? And as I heard her friend talk, you know what I'm saying, and she had a lot of curse words coming out of her mouth, I was like, oh, no, I don't, I don't want to meet this person, you dig? So I kind of ran up a little bit, and I grabbed a Sante hand, and she was like, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, I'm just... You know, getting to know you, you know what I'm saying? Just trying to meet, meet a new friend. She was like, well, you know what I'm saying? You don't even know me like that. I was like, oh, oh yeah, you're right. My name is Gerald. How you doing? <laughs> so she was like, okay, um, um, I'm about to get ready to go home. I said, well, I'll walk you home. It's no problem. Just to make sure you get home safe. And that's pretty much the start, you know what I'm saying, at the beginning. Okay. So what happened was is that Asante decided to uh, surprise me by taking everything out the house one day. I just got home from work. I don't even know what was going on, to be honest with you. I don't even know what argument we had or what, what could have been happening at the moment. I just got off work. The house was cleaned out. There was nothing in the house except my clothes in a tub of water. She decided that she gonna she got this house on her section eight or section eight house or something, babe. She moved out of the house that we was paying, you know what I'm saying, together with the kids and left and did not tell me where the address was, did not tell me where she lived at, did not even tell me where the kids would go, would even be at, you know what I'm saying? Didn't have no responsibility to basically hooking me up with them kids or, or the kids connecting with me, no kind of way, you know? So at this time, you know what I'm saying, I'm like living in an empty house, no lights on, you know what I'm saying, the water about to be cut off soon, you know what I'm saying, because I can't afford the bills by myself, okay? And I just so happen to just meet a girl named, uh, well, she, she don't want me to throw her name in there, you know what I'm saying, so I'm saying, Bonds, you dig? And what happened was is she took me in, she actually took me in, you know what I'm saying, as a friend at first, okay? And of course, one thing led to another, eventually, you know what I'm saying, and uh, we, we eventually got in a relationship. She wound up getting pregnant. And around this time that she actually got pregnant, Asante found out some kind of way. I don't know how she found out, but she found out. 
So she actually started connecting me with the kids then. So now, you know what I'm saying, she, she done got into, back into in my life with the kids. So now as I'm visiting the kids, we talking to seeing the kids and everything, she decided to bring me, you know what I'm saying, to the dentist to go get my bracelet done. You know what I'm saying, my teeth done. She paid $500 down. She was like, oh, they, oh you can pay $100 a month, you know what I'm saying, I know you can afford that, you know what I'm saying, blah, 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 blah. So she, she basically befriended me by, you know, paying, paying for stuff for me and everything. Right. And me, me not being, you know, me being stupid, naive, you know what I'm saying? And then it's, it's my kids there, you know what I'm saying? It's my kids that's actually older, you know what I'm saying? Not, not, not the baby that's actually in, you know what I'm saying, borrowed stomach, but, you know, my kids are actually out, but, oh. So, I kind of slipped back into her little spider web, and I went back into the, I went back, you know what I'm saying, back with her, you know what I'm saying? And that's what, that's her version of me going and cheating. Now, she left me, but that's her version of going and cheating and having a baby on her. Yes. We were still married, we were still together, you know what I'm saying? I actually came home one day and I seen her cell phone and it says Robert. And I was like, uh, who is Robert? And why Robert getting Robert, why Robert texting you? What's going on like that? She was like, Oh, that's R. Kelly. I'm his personal assistant. I book hotels room for his guys in the camp and different things like that. So, you know, I'm just you know, let her lie to me, you know what I'm saying? I'm feeding into the lies, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, okay, you're his personal assistant. How did you get close to him and all this and everything, then? She was like, oh, you remember the, the VIP spot that you were paying for at the clubs and different things like that, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I, 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 I was just basically, you know, sitting next to him, sitting next to him, and then one day he just started talking to me. I said, oh, you really? Are you serious? Are you really serious? You're using my money to actually go get VIP spots so you can get closer to your icon? Yeah. Okay. So I feel, at that time, I felt kind of stupid, you know? No, we are divorced, uh, uh, actually, you know what I'm saying? See, when that whole thing happened with the, you know what I'm saying, she the arcade personal assistant and everything like that, see, at that time, you know what I'm saying, I'm, I'm, I'm like uh, suspicious of her every day now, you know what I'm saying? So I start going through paperwork, start going through cell phones, you know what I'm saying? I start ear hustling, you know what I'm saying? Like a man, I, I did it, you know what I'm saying? And I started to find out more about her than, you know, than usual, you know what I'm saying? There's a little bit more going on with this. So eventually, you know what I'm saying, I found out, you know what I'm saying, that she was basically, you know what I'm saying, going to different concerts or flying out to his tours or flying out different places, you know what I'm saying, to literally follow this man, to stalk this man, you know what I'm saying? And the neighbors, the neighbors was watching my kids. And I'm like, why is Miss Athea keep watching my kids? Her name is Miss Athea, you know what I'm saying? She pretended that the lady sent in the notes to her, yes. You know what I'm saying? To put, to put false charges on her. To put false charges on her. You did? She had she actually had this girl arrested for terroristic threat and terroristic act. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And she actually had to go to jail. She bonded out. She had to pay for a lawyer. Then she had to pay for a private investigator because the lawyer did not want to do it. But she had to pay for a private investigator to get the IP address to see that it was Asante. And then once all that was over with, you know what I'm saying? The court the court dropped the charges. They know that Asante was lying, but no charges was ever brought against her. She's a she's a natural born liar, okay? And anyone, you know what I'm saying, that leaves her or or do anything that looks uh like like is hurting her or promoting her hurting her in some kind of way, she she finds a way to attack you first. It's like a it's like a mechanism, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh you wanna leave me, okay I'm gonna do this. Oh you wanna do this, I'm gonna do this, you know what I'm saying? Now, I even seen that one time, you know what I'm saying, that Tiara was supposed to go by her, day, her, her daddy, her father's house, it's like, you know what I'm saying? So what she did is, she took a picture, like, while I'm asleep, okay, mm -hmm. of her ring on top of my hand, you know, snap the picture on Tiara's phone and use that Tiara screenshot. So when Tiara goes over there, I guess, you know what I'm saying, he and her can see the screenshot. Now, why would you do that if you married to me? That don't make no sense, okay? Unless you still feeding for this man or something is going on. You know, you're still stalking this man and his wife for some reason. That's not only the reason why I'm coming out and talking about character, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, it's not, it's a thing that, you know what I'm saying, I would not stand by, you know what I'm saying, and let evil prevail, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, me, as my personality being an INFJ, you think, I would not stand by and just let evil prevail. And this is this woman right here is very evil, okay? And... You know what I'm saying? To, to basically, to, to be perfect honest with you also, you know what I'm saying? I feel that, you know what I'm saying, that if if you have your daughter watching and the neighbors watching and, and family friends, which I don't think she had family friends because half her family don't want to don't wanna talk to her, don't want to have nothing to do with her, you know what I'm saying? So friends of her family, they would be friends of her, 
okay? okay? And you have all these strangers watching my kids. What in case something would have happened to my kids while they was watching my kids? You know what I'm saying? Why you chased behind this guy? And then the, another note, you know what I'm saying? Why you didn't give them to me to raise? You know they, she was so busy wanting a paycheck for child support that she couldn't even give me my own kids to raise. You know what I'm saying? Why she could go... You could go everywhere. You could be free. You could do whatever you want to do. Just give me the kids. That don't make no sense, you know? But you better give it to a neighbors. You better give it to your daughter. Come yeah. on now, you know what I'm saying? That, that's yeah. that parenting. Okay. Uh, Sante, you know what I'm saying, is mental, period, okay? She's not mentally trapped by R. Kelly. She's mentally trapped by herself, okay? You know what I'm saying? Because Sante has been fabricating her lies since I don't know how long, you know what I'm saying? She, she even put her own mother, you know what I'm saying, in jail because she pretended that the bruises that she had got from other kids, fighting other kids, that her mother done it. She pretended that her brothers was her sons, you know what I'm saying? Basically, you know what I'm saying? That she was taking care of uh, her little brothers and everything, you know what I'm saying? And what little kid would pretend like that? Unless, you know what I'm saying, a kid loves to lie. A kid who loves, who fabricates things as they coming up, you know what I'm saying? Because why would you do something like that? Now, I actually have the report, and I actually send that to you, too. Right. Saying, I think it was I think it was Louisiana versus something something Carson. Uh, my trade uh, my take on uh, you know what I'm saying talking about R. Kelly today everything is a lie and it's fabricated because I know her character you know what I'm saying you cannot believe nothing she say even when she's speaking the truth it's hard you know what I'm saying to believe her because she's always lying no matter what she lies about the little smallest things you know and if you really listen to her you know what I'm saying you can you can you can hear her story change all the time it always change and if anyone's story change that means they're never telling the truth because if you're telling the truth you're gonna be passionate you're gonna be you're gonna get it out your heart you're gonna get it out your mind to, to basically focus and let the people know what is what, what, what is wrong with you. Okay, so now we have just heard the ex-husband of Asante McGee, the very person in the docu series that I believe she was maybe one of the first few in surviving our Kelly documentary that said that you know he did all this horrible stuff to her. And now we're going to listen to the daughter. We're going to get a glimpse of what Asante was doing during the time that she was traveling back and forth to be with R. Kelly and what she was telling her daughter and what her daughter was feeling about the situation and how it was really going down. So let's get to that interview. interesting shit because y'all mama didn't tell me that shit was like that ain't gonna lie she was like i ain't gonna lie she was telling me they were having fun but she was saying shit like oh y'all had a nanny and she was saying r kelly oh, she said r kelly get y'all a nanny and shit i i i was a nanny <laughs> <laughs> said, you, tell that nigga where your check at you need a check <laughs> that's why all my friends would be like tr you raising kids like those are your kids and that's why i say all the time like don't get my kids like what yeah I took care of them. See, I didn't know why you were saying that. <laughs> yeah. Damn, your mama coming she back. You don't tell everybody the full story. I'm the one that was watching this. Right. Right. And I was like, because I was wondering what, I was like, how in the hell she got there getting money? Like, I ain't going to lie. I was like, how in the hell is she getting money? I ain't going to lie. I was like, we, we like, we moved it every year. So I'm like, how is she getting the money for this fight? What is she doing? Yeah. And everybody would tell me, I'm like, uh-uh, you lying. Uh-uh. Like, yep. And then, like, and then she, so they said, and then she said, like, she, he was, like, keeping them in the house, but how in the hell, they, why in the hell they saying that, and then she was coming and going when she wanted to? Um, I guess because she had kids, I don't know. But I'm, I'm but I'm, now I'm saying, like, between me and you, she come in, she come home when she wants to, but I'm saying she telling the world that she was trapped in the house. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, that's that crazy shit. There it go. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she she forgot. Yeah, <laughs> wow, that shit crazy, man. That shit crazy. This shit is really yeah. crazy. And then they didn't linked up and came out, and they just like teamed up on his ass. Can't do nothing. Right, and then she, the text us while she in the house and everything. She'll text me, make sure somebody in jail will do this, take their bath, brush their teeth, like, okay. And then, yeah, then she 
trying to say he took their phone. How did, like, dude, all of them might be crazy for real, Tier. All of them just throw it up. <laughs> all of them suffer from the same disease. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> yeah, honestly. Damn, that shit crazy. Like, and then you as a child, that's what I'm saying. Like, you as a child looking at this shit and you knowing the like exactly how it was and you hear like how do you like what do you feel like what like how do you feel about these like people are able to do that shit like just looking at it now like how do you feel like knowing that like she was able to talk to y'all and she was able to come and go like she wanted to and then they they like and they going on national tv doing this shit like how you feel about that <laughs> just for the money huh yeah got it because she, she living a life, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> living a goddamn life. <laughs> Tierra said she living a life, to be honest. <laughs> she was. Like, she was getting spoiled. She was paying for everything for her. She come home with all these designer clothes, bags, and a bunch of money. Like, I still got the video when she came home with thousands of dollars. Damn. You, I ain't even seen that shit. Came home, checked up. Right. Helping other people pay their bills. Damn. How many thousands she had, Tia? <laughs> a lot. Oh, a lot oh, of it. Oh, <laughs> Tia. Pay somebody else right here, huh? <laughs> say, whew. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Came, well, she came flashing that shit with y'all shooting videos and everything. <laughs> I flexed with the money. You did? I took the money. I'm like, oh, who broke? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> he say mute broke. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. Nah. Damn. Y'all got damn. And then it's like, she, look, like I said, she still got all the pictures and everything. Like, she remembered. And then it's all like, what confused me, because when he came to town, she still went to his concert. Right. That's all like, Asante, what the fuck? That shit, then she tried to justify it. Like, no, the only reason why I'm going because of this and that. Well, I'm like, those people could definitely could have went to the concert without you. But, <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> wow. It's your mama. Yeah. Don't say nothing about it. You might get put out again for a whole goddamn. <laughs> I'm only here for two weeks. Yeah. See? Damn. So that damn, that's a, she probably that's how she probably bought the house, huh? I'm getting paid for this shit. Probably, I think so. I Cause she know. ain't work no goddamn well. She ain't work no fucking well. Like keeping it real, like your mom ain't like that coupon and shit. That shit is not fucking making that much money. Like no, she don't be cute. She don't sell all her girls like that no <laughs> She ain't got to. She she didn't hit me. <laughs> Hey, your mama like, told me. I think this house was like 14-something or 15-something. Hold on. All right, all right. So, here we go. What are your points? What are your views? What are your thoughts? This was a very critical, I believe, to the case. I'm going to talk about some comments that I just want to pour out. Um... According to R. Kelly News three years ago, answering some questions, why is he talking to her daughter? Jay stated in an interview that he called Tierra because he was suspicious about Asante's abuse claims against R. Kelly. To his surprise, Asante's daughter felt the same way. This conversation occurred after the Today Show interview back in May 2018. To anyone making this conversation out to be anything else, that says more about you. He dated Asante for 11 months and had a relationship with her kids. He stated this is an interview. Why did he record the phone conversation? I'm not sure why, but Jay had pieces of this conversation on his Instagram since May 2018. Initially, Jay was reluctant to release the whole thing out of fear. Jay has stated that Asante stalked him multiple times and put M&Ms in his gas tank. This, town, this sounds staged. It's not. It's a real phone conversation. Okay, here's another one. Be you. We need to share this all over the internet. 
Miss Tay, I always thought it was funny how she stated she just walked out and left because she just got tired of everything. If he was holding you hostage, how were you able to just get up and leave? Miss Smith says, this video needs to be shared um, all over the world. It's a shame and someone, and someone needs to save it. Oh, okay. And someone needs to save it. I'm sure being a celebrity has its good points and its bad part about fame. Is it if it can make you a target for optimistic people? Okay, Miss Starlight says, let's not give them a break. Let's keep sharing this because this needs to be shared over and over again. We will be TMZ since TMZ don't want to be TMZ on this. They take the negative on the R quick. But I am going to push this news every day until I hear about it on TV. Thank you so much, Miss Starlight. OMG, thank you for sharing this video with us. The truth always comes to the light. And then finally, Miss Banks, a lot of the females were group groupies from the sound of it. I'll still support Kells because if it was my daughter in a situation, I'm not about to make a documentary of it I'm given an interview from jail these parents and I use the term loosely sold their daughters when the check stopped is when they switched up the only children I feel bad for are ours Kelly's children they are the true victims in this whole scenario I truly believe Kells loved Aaliyah and that was his breaking point of not giving a fuck I'd be a hypocrite if I were to say anything about their situation because I was a female getting picked up from high school, got pregnant, but not ma married that young. I knew what I was doing and I was not a victim. I can live every day with no regrets. Some people mature differently than others. The man is a musical genius and we can't discredit that. I know I'm patiently waiting on another album. All right. And there's our comments for this segment. Well, everyone, thank you so much for liking, commenting, sharing your views about this podcast. And I hope that it has brought a light to some of the things that you may not have heard. You might have heard bits and pieces of it, but to bring it all together is very phenomenal to do when we're trying to do research about certain situations that cost people their freedom. So, um, yeah, I would like to know your views about it. Me, myself, personally, I feel that Asante McGee has just as many mental health issues that many abused individuals have during the course of trying to piece everything together in their lives and make sense of what has happened to them. I also feel that she her testimony should not have been um, able to be put on national TV as a credible evidentiary um, statement that could have cost R. Kelly his life based on, you know, just her testimony alone. There was not too many facts in this. And again, I feel like Robert Sylvester Kelly has been railroaded because in this situation right here, you know, it's not just the fact that Asante McGee has a convicted felony past. It doesn't matter. It's what they're doing with that past today that makes it um, relevant. And if she had fraud in her background, if she had bribery in her background and she's doing this again, there should have been no way that her story should have been able to be held up in court. I think it was just more for entertainment and to point the finger at Mr. Robert Sylvester Kelly. But I still say, R. Kells, keep your head up and know that you are loved out here. Know that you have people supporting and backing you and it'll all come together for you. It will, especially if you work on healing yourself from your past issues. So I thank you so much for listening and we will see you next time. And as always, keep it 100.